Integration between control systems and higher level IT systems such as ERP, MES and MOM have historically proven a challenge. Due to a lack of common protocols between these systems, getting these systems to talk to each other has proved somewhat of a task. The OPC UA protocol was released as a solution to this problem and is gaining traction. But what if we could use a protocol that is heavily utilized in the world of IT and bring it down to the shop floor level? To do exactly that, I would like to share with you the JSON RPC Web API for the Siemens S7 1500 Programmable Logic Controller. Now there's quite a lot going on in that name, so let's break it down. First of all, this is a web API, meaning that this is an application programming interface provided by the web server of the S7 1500 PLC. This means that other systems can open a HTTP connection to the web server of the PLC and read and write data from inside the control system. Now the reason why it's good to do this over the HTTP protocol is because it's been around for a very long time. Nearly all modern programming languages are able to support HTTP and if they cannot, there's a good chance that there's a library available. HTTP is also widely accepted by firewalls as companies are using this all day, every day. This means that we can seamlessly integrate these PLC APIs into existing network infrastructures without too much pain. The HTTP protocol is normally used to carry web pages from a web server to a web browser on your computer. In this application, we're not carrying web pages, but carrying PLC data. In order for us to understand what is in this PLC data, it must conform to some standard. The standard that has been chosen for this PLC API is JSON RPC. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and RPC stands for Remote Procedure Call. So what this means is we can open a HTTP connection to the PLC and send strings of JSON, which contain methods, and we can get data back from that control system. Let's have a look at how we configure this in TIA and what it looks like in action. Inside a TIA portal, we need to add ourselves an S7 1500 controller. Once the controller has been added, we need to go to the properties of the PLC and access the web server pane. At the bottom here, we need to turn on the web server and we need to permit access only with encrypted HTTP. As the data that's being transmitted through the web API is sensitive, we don't want third party man in the middle attacks compromising it. So if we do not have the HTTPS enabled, the web API will not work. If we scroll down, we then need to make ourselves a user. I've already added the user lowercase JSON with a password. In the access level, we then need to either choose read tags and write tags or one or the other. So if we were providing access to a third party system and we only wanted them to be able to read data out the control system, we could obviously choose this tick box here. For the security conscious among you, you're probably thinking it might be a bit dangerous to allow a third party to read every bit of the control system. So throughout the program, you will notice these columns accessible from HMI, OPC, UA and Web API, writable, as well as visible. So this gives us another level of control over who can view these different bits of information from third party systems. In my example, I've just got three random numbers being generated. And I've also got this hidden field down here just to show you that you're unable to see the data. Let's connect up the PLC and get ready to download to it. To test the web API, we can use a third party tool like Postman. For those of you not familiar with Postman, it is a HTTP client for testing web APIs. So what this will allow you to do is make sure the web API is functioning as expected before you start to integrate it into your third party system. The way Postman works is we have the HTTP request, which is what my computer is sending. And on the right hand side, we have the response from the PLC API. At the top here, we have the IP address of the PLC prefixed with HTTPS. 
and then the endpoint for the API, which is forward slash API slash JSON RPC. We shall send this command here, and we can now see that our login has been successful, and we've been given a token. On the left hand side, we can see the bits that go together to make a JSON RPC message. The bits of main interest are the method, which is api.login for logging in, and the parameters. So the login method takes a username and a password, and this is what we set earlier. On the right hand side here, the PLC has responded with a token. So this token now allows me to have a session enabled on the PLC, so I don't need to continually log in. In every subsequent request, I need to use this token to prove to the PLC API that I am authenticated. And this is the way that we get the security in this system. Without this authentication token, after a login, the PLC is not going to give us any data and not going to allow us to write to it. We need to embed this in the header of the request and tools like Postman can do this for us. So in this body, it's a bit more interesting. I'm sending three commands at the same time in an array. So I've incremented the ID of each request so that when the server responds, I can match my requests to my replies. You'll also see the method has now changed to PLC program dot read. And we now putting the variable in the parameter that we wish to read. If we were doing a write, we would have PLC program dot write, and then we'd have the parameter we want to write into with a value. So if I fire this off now, we're straight away getting the values back from my data block, which I showed you in TIA earlier. And we can keep sending this, and we'll keep getting refreshed data. So that's a look at using a tool to test a web API, but let's have a look at this embedded in a web page. For the sake of simplicity, I'm hosting a simple web page inside of the PLC itself, but this could be hosted anywhere. On the screen now, we can see a dynamic chart, which is drawn using JavaScript, using HTML5 objects. So here we can see the three values that are being read straight from the PLC. If we open the developer tools of my web browser and have a look at the web requests, what we can see here is my web browser has a bit of JavaScript running in it that every 500 milliseconds is requesting the values from the PLC. If we have a look at one of these requests, we can see here that the response is exactly the same as we saw in Postman. So what my web browser is doing is taking the response from the API of the PLC and rendering it inside of our web page. That's only one of the examples of what you can do with this API. So for example, any .NET application or Java or any third party that understands the HTTP protocol can now be integrated into the PLC system without too much pain. So thank you for watching. I hope this has been informative and showed you a good way of integrating a PLC control system into a higher level IT system using existing widely adopted protocols. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. See you next time.